we go. We are live. A little cold in the shop. Down in the bunker. Okay. Here we are. How can we help everybody today? Hope everybody's doing okay. Um, and uh, dealing with the uh, quarantine, I guess we'll call it. Lockdown. I don't know. <laughs> what are we calling it? Uh, it's, uh, insanity. It's a party. <laughs> What's up, Allison? Rodification R, yeah, there you go. So, um, you know, we can start with, um, I'm just kind of brushing off whatever's on the mat there. Um, we can start with uh, something that, that you and I have been working on recently um, from the half guard. And if anybody has any questions or uh, anything you guys would like to cover, or anything at all, anything you want to discuss, let us know in the comments. Um, but I was kind of thinking about going over the uh, half guard situation, uh, the, the, the stuff that you and I have been working on. You've been working on more of the, the, of the attack part when you're on the top, you're over the shoulder. Um, when I, in, in our last video where you and I were, I was doing the um, kind of voiceover where we, we rolled together, you, we were working on that a little bit where you caught the, the, the arm and guillotine, yeah. right? Yeah. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, the half guard position. So let's let's go. Let's have you on the top. And so, in the half guard, what she wants to do is is get me flat first and wrap my and eventually wrap my shoulder. Okay. So this is a good position for her. Eventually, what she wants to do is is, is switch her legs and switch her and, and sit to her hip, but not too far back. Right? So she wants to move her hips back a little bit this way and kind of keep something at her. Right now her hips are kind of her, her pointed base, right? She could also stretch this leg way out. She doesn't need to do that. But typically, if you keep the knee against the hip, you're gonna sit your, your, your hips back like this. And this is kind of your, your pointed base, right? And since you're over the shoulder, the weight is nice and heavy here. So what she wants to do eventually is she wants to get this, this knee free. Right? Now, she's got a lot smaller leg than I do, so when it's easier for her to, to free her knee. She just kind of toe heels her foot up. She frees the knee. She can either go to the mount position, or she can use that opportunity to step out. So what happens a lot of times when I feel that start to come up, I'll block this foot. I want to block this foot before it gets up too high. If she starts walking this leg up too high, even if I have my legs figure forward, if she brings her foot, bring your foot up close to my hips here, like put it right there on the floor. Now I can't block that. And now it's easy, when my legs are up here like this, now it's easy for her to clear her knee. And now she can kind of find the mat. So what I want to do when I notice this whole process starting is when I feel her start to bring her, well, she's going to start to healing her foot up, I block it with my bottom foot. So this foot is going to block it here. Now I'm going to take this top leg off and I hook inside her knee. And now I'm going to lift here and tip her over. Okay, so I'm going to lift. This hand comes down and chops the knee here, and I sweep here. Now, what happens a lot of times is they're gonna, when I make this switch, I come from here to here, they're gonna step that leg out. Now, if you're sticky, you can follow with it. But if not, you see how she stepped out, stepped out for base before I could, I could um, come up on top? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook this foot, the bottom leg now, and I'm gonna pull it in close to me. Now watch my bottom foot. As I pull this foot in close to me here, I'm gonna push off my bottom foot and I switch my hips. And now I can come up on top, okay? So if I wait too long, right, she's gonna be able to step out and then she's gonna be able to thread the needle. So if I miss this here, I come here, she steps out, boom. If I miss this, there, that's what's gonna happen. She switches the hips, she ends up passing the half guard. So when I make this switch, let's come back to the half guard, please. So I make this block here. I feed the foot inside the knee. If I'm sticky, I can follow her up. If I miss the leg at any point, this top leg here that was lifting is gonna come here to the bottom. I'm gonna drag her foot. I'm gonna pull this foot in towards me. And now I come up on top, okay? Now, that's a great half guard uh, sweep series, but I tried this a while ago my friend Huron, and he caught me in a 
kind of baited me on uh, coming up on top. And so we've been working on that. She's actually been getting pretty good at it. So what happens, what we've been working on is I come here, she steps out, I miss it, I grab here. It doesn't matter whether I sweep her over or whether I grab the foot or not. She's actually gonna scoot the hips back a little bit. So as I come up on top, she's gonna make a little bit of a hip scoot. Boom, and then she's gonna wrap my neck here. Now once she has the neck wrapped, my head's on this side, okay? So she, she doesn't want me to jump to this side. So once she makes this connection, she's gonna fall back and this leg is gonna wrap over top of my back. So she goes ahead and accepts the sweep and now she has the choke, all right? Okay, so the finish on that is a little different than the standard guillotine. So can I put you in the, in the uh, arm and guillotine? Let's have you on the top. So the finish here, okay, with the arm and guillotine, I can have my leg here, I can have it here, I can have the full guard, doesn't matter. As long as I block her ability to jump to the other side. I wanna, I'm gonna trap here like this, okay? So the finish is a little bit different than your typical guillotine. Typical guillotine, you can just, you can do this, you can pull straight up and you can fall back. Well, in the arm in guillotine, let me fix myself here. The arm in guillotine, uh, let's turn this way for a second, okay? If I'm just lifting straight up, this arm has a limitation and it's blocked by their armpit, okay? So I have to take away the space a little bit differently. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna rotate my wrist like this. So the head's on this side, I'm gonna wrap like this, this hand comes in, I'm gonna bend and I'm using my armpit and my lateral muscle here to push the neck down into the choke as I lean towards it, okay? So I can't just lift straight up like a regular guillotine, okay? I can't just do that, all right? Because this gets blocked by their armpit. But the cool thing about the arm and guillotine is it's a little bit more complicated to defend. So if you get good at it, okay, it's a, it's a really, really good submission. So I'm underneath the chin here, okay? I'm gonna make my fist, I, I reach through, I grab here, I rotate my wrist like this. So this is gonna come up. Everything else is, is kind of normal. I'm gonna pull it up nice and tight. The elbow goes, goes down towards the hip and my, my shoulder blade, okay, sorry, not my shoulder blades. <laughs> my right. armpit and my, my lateral muscle is gonna push the neck down to the choke. So I'm gonna wrap, I block her ability to kind of jump over to the other side and I bend to the side, okay? So it's a very, very solid choke. Um, I, I find it, um, uh, now I think a little bit, you know, it's, it's so funny years ago, the first time we saw people try to do that in, uh, like mixed martial arts, we would laugh at them like, ah, they don't have to do the guillotine. Like the arm stuck in. Well, Hinzo Gracie was the one who really, uh, at least on the MMA side of it, really, um, really kind of brought that to the forefront. He ended up, uh, finishing Pat Miletic with it. Uh, as, as well as a few other people, um, and people started to respect it. Like, man, it's a little bit different. Like, that's Can you go from the beginning one more time. From the beginning, sure. Was that enough? Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll do it again. So I know there's quite a, quite a bit there, but let's uh, let's take a look at it again. So if I'm on the bottom, because we're doing a little bit for the person on the bottom and a little bit for the person on the top. So she gets to the half guard position. I don't want to get stuck flat. But nonetheless, she does it. She gets me flat. Now she's gonna wrap over the shoulder. And the reason she's wrapping over the shoulder is so that she can switch her hips, still keep a base and a good weight distribution to keep me on my back, okay? Now, so as soon as I start to feel my, my top leg, my hook leg start to leave the floor, I have to block with this foot. Now, the first escape is just to come underneath, lift, tip them over, top here, okay? and then sweep and come on top. But sometimes they either grab here or I'm just not sticky enough on my hook and they're able to step that out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna drag this foot in. Let's turn this way a little bit so everybody can kind of see the finish. So when I drag that foot in and I come up, quite often this arm is gonna be here, lip helping with the, this underhook, right? This underhook is gonna be helping tip them over. So when I come up, she's actually gonna, she's, she's gonna accept the sweep. She's gonna scoot the hips, wrap the neck, and now she's got the arm in guillotine. She lays back, wraps the hip, and then she finishes. <coughs> good joke, no, it's good.
It was fantastic. So, hope that helps. Uh, can you go over deep half guard? That would be good in self-defense. So, deep half, the deep half and as far as self-defense goes, um, quite honestly, is a, it's, it's risky. Like it's, it, it, I'll, 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 I'll put the deep half guard in the same realm as the, um, I'll say as the, as, as the turtle position. Okay, it's an extremely temporary position. You can't stay there very long. So the deep half kind of looks, uh, this is generic, and I don't play it very much. I have, I'm like a one trick pony in the deep half guard. Okay, so if you're up on the top here, okay, and I have this leg, the deep half is basically underneath like this. Well, so there's all sorts of things. If you can sit up for me so I can look at the camera. Hi. So there's all sorts of things that you can do from the bottom position. A lot of times people will come underneath. And I have friends who are really good at this position. The problem is, if she decided to strike me, this is bad news, right? Okay, so it's extremely temporary. If you find yourself stuck here, you cannot hang here out, out here very long, okay? So from a self-defense perspective, the only thing that I really, I, I, I would say that I, I use deep half for would be basically a, a single leg uh, situation. So um, if somebody's coming through to the half guard, it's like boom, and I come up like this. Like I like this sweep a lot because I'm not staying on my back very long and I'm staying nice and tight to them. So anything that puts me back flat where I have to kind of rock the boat is going to be dangerous um, if you're there longer than a few seconds. So I would say uh, from a self-defense perspective, you really you have to look at the deep half or a position like that, even or even a leg lock position or a turtle position as an extremely temporary uh, situation. Like you have to you have to develop the capability of of escaping that position and moving as quickly as possible. Because if, if you're hanging out there long trying to rock, rock the boat, you're just going to get you're going to get hit, right? So I hope that uh, makes sense. Yeah, once in a while is good. It's like anything else. Hello, James from Pittsburgh, PA. All right. So, um, yeah, this is our fourth one. We're just trying to get as, as much information out there as possible to our, our, uh, our students and our friends out online and while everybody's kind of locked down. And, uh, yeah, we'd love to hear from everybody, see what you guys would like to, uh, to see. And even if you're watching this later on, Post in the comments, we'll be able to read them and find out, you know, and just see w what direction we can take this and what we can, what we can share next time. So, all right, let's take a look. Clock choke variations, all right. So, you know, this is a funny story. Roadification. All right, I know you like our videos, so thanks for, for subscribing and watching and all that. Um, I'll tell you this little story. The, the clock choke back in the 90s was a, was a big deal, right? Um, Hoist got caught in it and got choked out by, by Leach but Ishmael. Um, that was a big deal back then, right? I mean, back when the Gracies didn't tap, you know? And um, so the clock choke uh, kind of for, actually I think uh, a variation of the clock choke, I think, I think Hoyler got caught with it as well um, by Mario Spiri. And uh, those were two big, huge matches in, in, back in the day, back in the 90s. That was, that was a big, big deal. The Gracie's got caught, like, oh my gosh. Um, and so everybody studied it, but you don't see it as much anymore. And I, I think the reason is that a lot of people have changed how they attack the, 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 the turtle position. And, and I think a lot of people really don't hang out in the turtle in the same way as they used to. So the turtle position is basically this. And my friend Pedro Valenci said it the best, like the turtle position is good for turtles because they have a hard shell, right? Humans, we don't have this hard shell. Like that's, that's a fetal position. Like you don't want to stay there. And so everything comes from the, from, uh, as far as the attacks come from you hanging out in that position. So it, it's, it's gotta be a transitional position. So you've either got to sit out and try to, and try to, you know, Kip out and, and, and take the back. You gotta sit back to your guard, or you gotta grab onto a leg and circle and finish a takedown. So you don't want to hang out there very very long, right? So if let's say I took a really, you know, I took a shot and 
you know, we were from the same position and they sprawled out. I'm basically right now in the turtle position. But it's up to me to decide whether I just hang out there or I, 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 I maneuver and move on. So I don't want to look at that as a defensive situation. I need to look at the turtle as a transitional position. A lot of people will go there and hang out to breathe or whatever, but it's not, as far as, you know, jujitsu goes, I, it's not a great position to, to, to really just hang out in. You have to learn how to transition out of it. So honestly, I would rather be, if I got stuck there, I would rather have the person in top on me in side control than be stuck in the turtle. I want to be able to face my opponent and be able to grab and control and hold and take space away if, if needed. Um, so you're kind of at the mercy of them if you're, you're, they kind of have your back a little bit in the turtle position. So um, as far as the attacks go, um, man, there's a lot of ways that you can set it up. If somebody wants to actually hang out here, so I know I, know, I haven't really shown Mandy much turtle. about <laughs> the turtle position at all. And there's good reason for it because it's, it's not a position where you want to hang out, right? So I think my favorite attack from this position is to drive the knee in between the, um, uh, the arm and the, and the leg here. And I like to grab on to uh, the backside leg here. So let's spin this direction. So I really, um, yeah, I, I, as far as a, a defensive position, I don't respect it very much, as you can tell. But from an offensive perspective, I like it a lot. I like to be able to attack this position. So if somebody is, is gonna stay there for me, I drive that knee in between. I like to grab the, either the leg or the pants here, and I pinch this elbow tight to the hip. Now my weight, I'm sorry, I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure on you here. I'm putting my weight right, I center my sternum right on the center of her back, and then down towards the shoulder. And I sink it down towards me. So now you feel that pressure. It's mm -hmm. hard for you to even stretch your leg to put me in the guard, yeah. right? So that's what I want. If I want to hold the person here, that's what that's the kind of pressure that I want. It's down here and I sink down at this 45 degree angle. Now I have time to start attacking their neck. So let's turn this direction a bit. So the clock choke itself, if we get inside here like this, if I'm able to come inside and grab the collar, I like to bring my forehead to the floor and I bring my whole body down this way. Old school way was to kind of do this and even sometimes sit through and do this and sit up. Well, there were some pretty good defenses to that. And so people had to adjust. So let's scoot back a little bit. So what you saw, and especially Balij, you know, when you saw him uh, fight voice, he was aware of some of those, those, those early and good defenses to the position. So when he got inside here like this, when Hoyt ended up turtling, he slid his body here. He went down. Okay, so now my weight starts to come through, and now I start to sit through. That's a lot of pressure <laughs> on the neck. So my funny story to you is that I never, that's not my go-to attack from the, from the turtle position. I really like getting the crucifix position from there, but I did do the clock. That's actually, I have, I, I've taught the technique. Okay, I, I do teach the technique. I teach the clock joke. Um, but as far as catching it in sparring, uh, I've done it one time and it was right after I got my black belt and it was literally just because, you know what, like I'm a black belt, I should probably catch this move at least once. Uh, and that's when I did it. I got my black belt. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I need to catch, I need to catch clock, clock choke at least once. I did it, put it on the shelf. I haven't caught it since. And it's not because I don't respect the move. It's just that I like a lot of other things from that position. So I'll show you, and I actually picked this, this arm strip away from, from um, uh, one of our instructors that, uh, Fredson Alvich, was an amazing technician. And he showed me this and, I, and I've used it ever since. So anytime somebody turtles on me, this is my go-to. So sometimes when you're turtled, you want your hands to be nice and tight here, bring your elbows up to your, to your you wanna bring them up to your hips here like this. Good. So don't fault her because I haven't shown her this stuff yet. <laughs> Because you don't, you don't want to be here, right? Okay, so if I drive this in here like this and I reach in, they're going to think you want the neck, okay? So what I'm actually doing is I'm grabbing my own knee. And what I'm going to do is, what, now that I have my own knee, I slide this out. So I slide it out. Now the arm starts to come away from her body. And now I'm going to bring this leg in. I'm going to scoop the arm up. Post, reach under this far side arm. I tuck and roll. And now we're here. 
I put some pressure on the arm, the head comes up, I go here for the choke. Okay, so, and there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do from that crucifix position, but that typically is what I'm gonna, if somebody turtles up on me, more often than not, that's what I chase. I really like that crucifix position. Um, it's, it's so close to the back. Have I shown you that yet? Oh, well, there you go. Have to watch the video. <laughs> Pretty slick though, huh? All right, let's see here. Well, I hope you liked it. Thanks. Rogification. I hope I'm saying rogification properly. <laughs> so, um, let's see what time we got here. How are we doing on time? Where's our time? We're at 621. 621. So we got a few minutes left. Um, just wanted to kind of put some stuff out there and, and see, uh, yeah, see what everybody's looking to, to, uh, to work on at home. And, um, yeah, share as much as, as, as possible. It's kind of nice having the questions because sometimes this stuff comes up and I haven't really, haven't thought about it in a while and she may, I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. Let's, let's cover that. So I'll share the crucifix tomorrow. Sound good? All right. Very cool. Well, any more questions we got here? How do you transition into a butterfly guard? Okay, so that's a great question. A lot of it depends on the situation. So I, the butterfly guard itself, um, so let's show everybody kind of what, what the butterfly guard is. It's basically this, and a lot of times you'll have an underhook in a position here. So um, it really depends, and, and I have to back up and say, okay, why would I want to be in the butterfly guard? Uh, do I want to stand up? Do I want to sweep? What is it that I'm looking to do in that position? Uh, as far as skill development goes, if you're looking to do some hook sweeps and things like that, then you may want to actually find ways to actually f get to the butterfly guard, okay? So uh, sometimes it's simple as just slapping hands and, and just pulling yourself in, okay? Into this position. I, I start like this quite a bit, usually because I'm kind of blocking you know, they're, I don't want them to have occupy this space unless I have them in the closed guard. Okay, but let's say um, yeah, I do have the closed guard and I want to transition into the butterfly guard for whatever reason. Maybe I'm developing some skills from that position. Maybe I'm trying to sweep. I'm trying to um, maybe stand up from the bottom position. How can I do that from the closed guard? Okay, I, th I think that's the question that's being asked here. So um, very simply here like this, in this position, it's not hard at all because now, and I would not, if I were playing my, my full on, you know, self-defense game or, or just jujitsu game in general, I wouldn't just go to the butterfly guard like this, unless it was something that I was just saying, you know what, I want to work on the butterfly guard today, right? Uh, if I was playing my, my, my A game, if I have my closed guard, I'm not giving it up for the butterfly. This is where I have the most control. This is where I have the best defense. So I'm gonna keep my closed guard, okay? But let's say that I want to develop those skills. A lot of times, uh, you may wanna to switch to a butterfly guard if the person is staying very low, okay? Let's say they're getting down low like this and they're trying to block us. You've got, my, you've got me blocked here like this, okay? So this is where you may want to transition and change, like the person's kind of stifling you here. Okay, so one thing you can do is come inside like this. You can grab their collar, thumb in, and you start to raise up. I come up just to my elbow, and now I'm gonna put the foot on the floor. My foot goes to her hip. I put one foot inside, post, and now I'm gonna swim inside, okay? Now, that's how a lot of people would transition into the butterfly guard. Um, I, sometimes I'm kind of lazy, right? And I don't play a butterfly guard where I have an underhook like this. I don't like this position very much for me. But I'm a taller person. So a lot of times I lull people into wanting to smash my legs. So if they pin, some people will try to pin your feet here so that they can pass the butterfly because they would rather pass the butterfly. They'd rather, rather have your feet pinned and pass you that way, like a smash pass, than they would uh, deal with your closed guard. So I get this a lot. So people come over top and try to smash this down. Well, this is a little bit tricky and I like this position because now, they feel like they have a little bit better base and control. But since I'm a tall guy, and this works well for me, 
I like to grab the belt over top. I don't like the underhook, I like the overhook, okay? And I like holding on to the sleeve here. And now I tip to the side and I start pushing off the floor like this. Very similar to, I forget which takedown it's called. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's a, where you bar off the floor. So it, it, as I rock back, I keep this nice and strong here and I pull, I use the belt here. It doesn't matter where there, I don't fight this hand too much. If, it's, if it posts out, I can pull it with me, okay? So scoot back that way for just a second, okay? So what I'll do is I'll rock this direction. I keep everything nice and solid. I'm connected to them. I pull this way and now I dig this foot into the floor and I lift. Now I have a big extension here and now I can follow. So even if the hand is here, I can follow and take them over top of their pointed base. So let's scoot back this way and show them what that looks like. So here, the person's nice and low and they start to smash here. So I'm gonna grab the belt, I tip to the side and I start lifting. I start barring off the floor and at some point they tip over. Okay, so that's probably, that's one of my highest percentage sweeps uh, from the guard position. But it's not a position that I, I look to get into, okay? Um, it's usually just in response to how they're, they're dealing with what I'm doing on the bottom. My favorite positions on the bottom are closed guard and foot and hip. Uh, foot and hip control, I think, is, is the best open guard uh, to, to play. But there's so many really great and powerful sweeps where you make that hook, okay? So for example, like just the basic elevator sweep. Um, like this. So if we have this person down like this and we're defending and they lift, they, they're up on their, up on your legs, come up on your feet, okay? And I can scoop my hips out, I can hook inside their leg here. Just this hook sweep here like this, where they're laying over top, right? If she was a lot bigger, she was weight, laying her weight on me, it'd be a little bit different, but keep your feet back further. Okay, so here. This is a basic hook sweep, okay? So we're lifting and tipping them over. Basic ele elevator sweep, so that's sort of like a, a rudimentary uh, butterfly guard, right? Um, so I don't use, I don't, for me personally, I don't, I don't look to say, you know, I'm gonna go to the butterfly guard, right? If that's what's available to me, that's what I take. So if they're propped up and I, I can use the butterfly guard to go underneath of them and maybe switch into something like a leg attack, then I'll use it for that. And really, you know, as far as like giving up my, my I, would, I wouldn't give up my closed guard, I guess is what I'm trying to say, to go to a butterfly, unless I felt like I was just being held down and I wanted to escape. And at that point, if I could get to a butterfly guard, chances are I could probably stand up from the guard as well. So I hope that makes sense and answers your questions. So Well, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, Modification says, I'm a three-stripe white belt, by the way. All these lessons are really helping me make sense of BJJ. I hope so. And um, I hope it's helping you too. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Do you have any questions? Well, a million. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, my friends, so we're going to end it there, I think. Um, we'll be back again probably Thursday. So, uh, yeah, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and uh, give us, you know, some feedback. If there's anything specific you guys want to uh, learn or, or work on at home while you're dealing with all this, uh, this craziness, let us know. And uh, even if it's just discussion topics, we'd, we'd love to hear from you. So... Take care, stay safe, we'll see you soon.